It's nice to be back. I've been down here a few times. It's been a while. I love coming down. Thank you for having me. It's always a delight. Um, and I love coming to talk to fellow nerds. Um, today I'm going to talk about innovation, and I'll get to product in a bit. Um, but how many people here, if asked, feel a little bit of innovation fatigue? We're constantly talking about new stuff. Nobody? Absolutely nobody in this audience? OK, thank you, liars. Um, I'm going to talk about innovation, but I'm going to talk about innovation theater, right? I titled this innovation theater because I feel like a lot of times, especially now, in newsrooms, a lot of what we do feels innovative. It seems innovative, but in truth, I feel like it's just kind of performance, and it's really not getting at what we really need to do around innovation. And we love to talk about innovation, right? You just do a Google search on innovation, you look at Neiman Labs, pointers, we're writing about innovation all the time. And we talk about innovation and it always ends up being a thing, right? It ends up being virtual reality, augmented reality, 360 video, email newsletters, podcasts, code, design thinking, hyperlocal wikis, folksonomy, metrics, SEO, personalization, engagement, localization, data, open data, data viz, big data, Data science, civic journalism, solutions journalism, audience development, bots, robot journalism, dro drone journalism, sensor journalism, geotargeting, product management, crowdsourcing, the cloud, pivot to video membership, long form snackable content, my personal favorite, homepage is dead, mobile first, digital first, when does it fucking end? <laughs> right? So let's start by defining the word innovation. And everybody's got a di slightly different view of what the word innovation means. If you look up, if you Google innovation, you get this definition. It is the act or process of innovating. Okay, that is not helpful. But let's look, a different, let's look a slightly different way. Let's talk about innovation and invention, okay, which are two different concepts. So invention is the light bulb. It means, ta-da, here is something new that we haven't seen before. At least this is my working definition of it. Innovation, and I love the way that this definition of innovation reads, it can refer to something new or a change made in an existing product idea or field. One might say that the first telephone was invention. The first cell, cell phone is either invention or innovation, I, possibly both. The smartphone is pure innovation. Okay? And I think that's a really good way to be thinking about this, that innovation can be many things. It can be incremental. It doesn't have to be this sort of burst of uh, a light bulb over your head and suddenly something new. It can be incremental. It can take something and move it slightly forward. It might be really boring. It might be plumbing. It might be a process. It might be a way of doing something slightly better uh, or more efficiently. Innovation is measurable, and here's where most news organizations fall down spectacularly. If you're not measuring it, it doesn't exist. And part of the reason why I feel strongly that innovation needs to be measurable is how often do we read stories like this, where Newsroom X, usually this is in like Digiday or some other publication like this, News Organization X does a thing and everybody goes, ooh, ah, let's go do that thing too. And then six months later, 12 months later, you know, you go and you, see, you hear about it at conferences, everybody's talking about how great it is. You see presentations like this, everything is going up, upper right, everything is going great, then six months later they shut it down. Oh, what happened there? This is this cycle of innovation theater that I'm, that I'm talking about. Innovation needs to be part of a bigger strategy. Innovation outside of a strategy is absolutely a waste of time, in my view, because it doesn't contribute to something bigger. It doesn't point toward an ultimate objective. And if I could point to one report that I think got this spectacularly right uh, as, as regards the news industry, it's this report that the Reuters Institute published last year that talked about innovation in news. Um, and this is my favorite paragraph from the report, that in the absence of purposeful strategy and reflective practice, ad hoc, frantic, often short-term experimentation 
is unlikely to lead to sustainable in, in, innovation or real progress. And I gotta tell you, I've spent a lot of time doing um, purposeful, doing, doing things that have a complete absence of purposeful strategy or reflective practice. And a lot of what I do and have done in the past feels extremely ad hoc, extremely frantic, and often short term. So, wouldn't it be great if there were a way that we could actually sort of address this problem a little more systematically? Wouldn't it be great if there were methodologies out there that would help us make choices, help us say, oh, we should be doing this and not that. We should be applying these innovative ideas to a particular strategy, and luckily there is, and it's called product, or product management, product thinking, take your choice. But we have problems in news organizations right now, right? We've hired a bunch of product managers into news organizations, but they haven't been as impactful as I think they need to be, and a few things have to change. News organizations are extremely siloed. This is the true of the big ones, true of the little ones. These organizations tend to work in very vertical silos. There's ad sales, there's circulation, there's editorial, there's all these, there's IT, there's product. They all have their own silos and they don't work together particularly well. And you can understand why, particularly in the area of news or newspapers, right? Because for years, 100 years, 150 years, a newspaper had to produce exactly one product, and that's this big, clunky newspaper that lands on your front door or in the newsstand every day. And that makes sense when you have one product to have an organization that's aligned in these big silos. It doesn't work so well when you're talking about releasing multiple products or when you're dealing with digital products that can be made up of different things. And when you start, and when we start layering different business models on top of all of that, it becomes, this sort of a structure becomes hugely problematic. There's another big problem with news organizations, and it applies to data journalism as much as it does to product. And it's a very similar problem. It's the problem of the outsider, right? That in newsrooms, the data journalists are always the nerds in the corner. Right? They're the ones with the special skills. And sometimes these are, they're sort of um, considered sort of second class citizens, or sometimes they're put on pedestals. Oh, they're the wizards. They're the magical thinkers who can do this, all this stuff that I don't understand, which is nonsense, right? Which is utter and complete nonsense. Every journalist could learn to do, could learn the skills necessary to do data and data analysis. And every journalist can learn to do product, learn and understand how product and product thinking works. But right now we have this problem that all these folks are the outsiders. So even within those silos, product is sort of put to the side. There's another huge problem that applies as much to data journalism as it does to product, is that these specialized skills, these new kinds of uh, skills that we're bringing into news organizations, they end up having a very limited career path, right? Because there's a very limited career path from being a product manager going into um, you know, a very senior role on the business side. And the same is true in, in editorial. A lot of editorial, a lot of organizations are hiring in product people into editorial. And they can only go so far. So we're gonna try to do something about all of this. And um, uh, so there's a couple of things we've announced and there's more coming, but a group of us uh, have gotten together uh, and we're trying to figure out ways to elevate and empower product teams, not just in the US, but around the world. We're trying to find ways to bring this community of product and product thinkers together in a more meaningful way, both to support one another, but also to advocate and teach and train and learn. And we're trying to find a way overall, at the end, talk about putting innovation and strategy together. Our grand strategy is to change the way we function as news organizations, is to make these news organizations fundamentally more product-oriented than they are right now. And so we've done two things. Uh, first, we, the one thing we've announced is SourceCon product. This will be a conference we hold in Philadelphia uh, in February, and I'd love to see everybody here, there. Um, we're working with an organization called Open News to 
um, host this event. And it is, at least to my knowledge, the first of its kind, the first, product, uh, the first conference for, by, and about product and news. Um, we were hoping then, the second thing, we're hoping out of that conference will come an organization of some kind. Some sort of a product and news organization that has, uh, uh, not just for news, but also has a global focus. Uh, those are the two things that we're uh, working on. If this in interests you at all, um, and I certainly hope it does, I would welcome you to sign up uh, for our, onto our email list. As of now, it's extremely low traffic, but I, it'll start picking up pretty soon, and it's at bit.ly slash product thinkers is where you can find that. And if we don't start doing this and start getting on this relatively soon, we're going to keep in this cycle. We're going to keep going in this cycle of innovation theater. We're going to keep throwing things against the wall and hoping, praying it works. And frankly, that is not a strategy. Thanks very much.